and that one's there. Ah, oh, good morning, Russ. We've got um, a few participants that are that are that have um, come online so far, Russ. Um, so welcome to to those who've, that are just joining us. We'll just give it a couple of minutes while we wait for everybody to uh, get online. It's um, Wonderful day down here in Melbourne outside anyway. Nice and sunny, good spring weather. I think it's great, Russ, that we've seen such a good response too for this webinar from around the country, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. It's really good to see that people are wanting to get more information about these products for their clients. Yep. And have you um, done a few of these webinars before, Russ? We have done quite a few, uh, yep. um, in the COVID times, you know, that we're um, making the most of, of what we can do, um, you know, while we're, we're sort of locked yep. down down here in Victoria. I think it's good to um, have been able to, like you said, there's, you know, we feel a lot of these questions every day from hundreds of people around the country and it's good to sh do what we can to share the knowledge in a platform that is, um, you know, open to everybody and gives people a chance to listen and learn when they don't normally feel comfortable asking questions. So if you haven't participated in a webinar before, remember today you've got the ability to ask questions and we can answer those um, via text back to you or we'll answer them live if, if we think the content's relevant to everybody we'll we'll certainly do that maybe russ while we just wait for a couple of others to join us i'll just give people a bit of a background on word of mouth technology um, our company started what we do about 20, well, nearly 25 years ago now. And um, the company was founded by my father, uh, my mum and dad, Bob and Betty, and my dad's profoundly deaf. He's had bilateral cochlear, cochlear implants, um, sort of led us to be involved in the industry that we're in. We used to make or um, import various solutions, including telephone typewriters for deaf people. Um, as well as making our own uh, flashing light systems for homes. And where we've moved to now is a business that is involved a lot in the same area, but we do a lot of work in the building and construction industry with hearing assistance systems for public spaces. We also do a lot of work with job access and workplace modifications. And of course, what the content about um, will be today, that Russell will be taking you through, is everything about our, uh, specifically our Bellman Visit alerting systems, um, which obviously the interest has grown exponentially, um, you know, since the NDIS came online. But Bellman Visit well, products have been around for nearly as long as our company has now, 25 years, um, in specialising in this field. They're a unique business that specialises in technology for um, deaf, hard of hearing people. And now moving into that aged, um, care area as well, but the company is a Swedish company um, which distributes their products internationally and we are proud to be their distributor in Australia, um, for which we've been the distributor for for nearly 10 years now. And we supply these products that you're about to see today directly to the uh, public, but we also supply them through a number of our key resellers around the country. So a lot of our major um, hearing care retailers, private hearing care retailers, as well as some specialised assistive technology um, companies in every state of Australia, you have access to these products. So um, no matter where you are, we can support you with these solutions. And what's really exciting is it's pretty easy stuff to install. Um, so Russ, we might kick it off um, now to um, start the presentation. Um, no worries. Introduce you to Russell. 
Thank you all for coming along and uh, joining us today. Um, it's really good to, to have you all and have the opportunity to, to present these products to you. Um, hopefully in, in you know, providing you with some information that you may not know if you've already used these products for your clients before, um, as well as you know, introducing you to the products for the first time for maybe you've seen a client or you, you have clients on your books that um, have a hearing loss that you need to assist them with in, in finding suitable technology for their, their home alerting. So we will kick it off, I reckon. And we'll start with our smoke detector transmitter. This is a smoke detector, which is similar to any other smoke detector that people have in their homes. Um, it screws onto the ceiling using a bracket and then the smoke detector clips onto that bracket and sends a signal to trans, uh, receivers in the client's home um, when it's activated by smoke or heat, um, which is really good. Um, they come with a 10 year sealed lithium battery. So they don't have to get up on the ladder and change batteries every six months. It's literally just put it up there, make sure you give it a dust every now and then um, and give it a test by pushing the test button on the front there to make sure it's working. The smoke alarms are interconnected. So if one of them goes off, then it'll send a signal to the next one saying it's going off, which will send a signal to the next one. So if someone's got a, a reasonably large home, um, then they would be able to you know, make sure the signal goes from one end of the house to the other, um, and then onto whatever receivers they've got in place, which we'll look at shortly. Um, there's a hush button, so if it's going off and, and you know it's just that you've burnt the toast, you can press this button on the front and it will stop it alarming um, for five minutes and then it'll turn itself back on. Uh, these smoke alarms are all approved to Australian Standard 3786.2014, which is really important. It's the latest smoke alarm standard um, for Australia and, and that's what they're approved up to. And if you've got clients that buy multiples of these, um, word of mouth will actually pair them all together for you before we dispatch them out to the client. I think in practice for us, that smoke alarm, um, as you said, uh, the nice thing I like about this one, and we've had a couple of models over the years for people that know the previous ones, aesthetically, this is the nicest looking one we've seen. Um, it no longer has the wire that hangs out of the that hung out of the top of the previous one. So it really fits in nicely um, as all smoke alarms should. They should be, um, I guess, heard, but not seen. That's what like, some people like to say. Um, but the interconnection, I think, is a valuable thing to reinforce. So we, we should reinforce for people that, you know, a lot of homes that are built today, if you have mains powered smoke alarms, they're interconnected with a wire, which means when one goes off, they all go off. What we're talking about with this product is wireless interconnection and that we would pair them as in we have a process that we follow to push some buttons to make them connect to each other. So when a person has them in their house, whether they have two smoke alarms or 10 smoke alarms, when one goes off, they will all go off. And if you happen to have a long house, they work as a repeater for the smoke alarm signal. Um, if someone adds this smoke alarm to smoke alarms that they already have that were the previous models, there's no interconnectivity, okay? But they will still work. So it's important to note that even though this is a new smoke alarm, it's compatible with all the Bellman Visit products. And that's great with all this stuff we're talking about, you can have a flashing light that you got 10 years ago, this smoke alarm will work with it. Just wanted to point that out. All right. Our next transmitter is our Bellman Visit door transmitter. So this door transmitter works with all audible doorbells. So if the customer's got a doorbell at home that you know makes a ding dong noise, they simply take this transmitter, attach it to the doorbell, it listens for the sound of the doorbell, and then we'll send a signal to um, whatever Bellman visit receivers they've got in their home. Now this day and age, everyone's got these fancy doorbells that make you know different songs and different uh, ringtones, and you can choose from 300 different options. Uh, this door transmitter has the ability to record the sound and learn what the doorbell sound sounds like, and then it will transmit when it hears that particular sound. So it's a really clever little transmitter. Um, 
it can also connect to wired doorbells. Inside, it has a little connection block. So if someone's got a wired doorbell, then they can run a wire to this transmitter and that will then activate to say that there's someone at the door as well. It uses two AA batteries. And I'll just point out that all of the Bellman products um, or all the products that Word of Mouth Technology sells, we always sell with the batteries included. So the customer doesn't have to receive the products and then go out hunting for a whole heap of batteries to, to make them work. Um, they'll be able to open the box from WOM and take out whatever products they've got and they're all ready to go. The, um, just on the doorbell, Russ, one of the questions from one of the uh, attendees was just about whether it needs installation by a tradesperson. It, it doesn't. It's easy to install yourself. A person just needs to be able to manage a screwdriver. And if you've got brickwork, a, a drill, I suppose, but it comes with the screws and everything you need to fix that there. Oh, not this one. This this one just will stick on the door chime part. Of, oh, yeah, of course. You can even just so stick it on with the adhesive, yeah. So yeah, double sided Velcro and, and stick. Uh, just stick it onto the door chime. Yeah. Um, and a couple of other questions too coming through, Russ, but I think we'll cover those when we talk about the accessories that are available, which I think are probably on your next slide, aren't they? Uh, the next slide shows the doorbell connection. Which Perfect. Is that, that was one of the questions that's just come up here. And Russ, I'll just explain that. The external microphone you can see in this illustration this shows a good solution for people who've got older style intercom systems. And that's one of the questions from the attendees um, that, you know, we find this gives you better success because those intercoms tend to have a fairly weak chime sound. And this external microphone that you can see illustrated plugs into the transmitter that Russell has just shown you. And it makes it much more effective at picking up the sound of the intercom. You just stick it on the phone or the, or the wall panel or you can sometimes stick it behind it. I'll let you um, continue, Russ. Yeah, it's also got a wired connection there that you can see that connects to that external trigger block inside. Next one is our push button transmitter. So this one also works as a wireless doorbell. It has a range of about 20 meters. So you'd need to look at the size of the customer's house um, before putting this one in um, and also consider how many walls it has to go through and that sort of thing um, before it reaches whatever receivers the client's going to have in their home. Um, really easy to install. It comes with a sticky pad that just sticks on the outside or the client may choose to um, connect it with a drill and, and a screw that's also provided with the, the device. Um, simply just push the button sends a signal, the doorbell sound goes off, it sends flashing lights or, or whatever receivers you've got uh, in the home. It, it, this one can also be used as a personal transmitter. So um, in a relationship where you know one person may be hearing impaired, the other person may be prone to falls or you know have something like epilepsy or something like that, they can wear this around their neck on a lanyard that's also provided with it um, and then when they're walking around the home, if they have a fall or they have a need for the other person to come, they can simply push that button um, and it will send that signal out to, to whatever receivers to say, you know, I need help. And we can actually change this, this transmitter to send a different signal to the doorbell so, so that um, it's easily identifiable, um, whether it's the doorbell going off or whether it's the person that needs some assistance. The user can change that, can't they, Russ, with the push button, the signal They can put it sends. with the switches inside, yeah. And yep. it's all in the instruction manual how to do So that. you can open that battery cover, change the dip switches yourself, um, right. or the user can. It's not something that requires any technical skill. No. All right. Our next one up is our Bellman Visit telephone transmitter. So that's this unit here. Um, so this one connects to your landline phone, so either through your NBN socket, um, or if your NBN is wired through the house, you can plug it to any of the other phone sockets, or if you're still on the old copper phone lines, um, it'll work through that as well, just plug it into one of the, the phone sockets. Um, it allows for connectivity, it's got an external trigger on the side there, 
and that connects to things like our mobile phone sensor, the contact mat, or the magnetic switch, which I'll go through shortly. Um, again, it uses the two AA batteries, um, so it's it's you know easy to power with with um, batteries that are readily available, and they'll last about six months in that. So you know just need to make sure that they check the batteries and change them as need be. And this slide just shows some of the connectivity. So you've got things like, you know, you can connect a doorbell to it. Um, the contact mat is there, it goes at the front door. Um, so if someone steps on that, um, then it will activate and say, hey, you know, someone stepped on the mat. There's a magnetic switch that connects uh, between a window or a door. And as that opens, the switch comes apart and then that will activate the transmitter and send the signal there. Or you've got our mobile phone sensor, which you can see here attached to the clock. Um, and that will then um, alert to a mobile phone, receiving a phone call, an SMS, any notification that makes the screen light up, um, that sensor will pick that up and send a signal to whatever receivers the person has in their home. The, um, I think the thing to talk about too, Russ, there is to, um, you can tell we're live on a webinar, Russ, I've got children running into the office there. Uh, <laughs> um, sorry, I'm just talking to someone. Don't I? The um, thing with that transmitter is that you can use the mobile phone sensor with the telephone transmitter. It means that people will be able to send a signal to all of the receivers in the home. Whereas if it's connected to your alarm clock, you'll only be woken up with the bed shaker under the pillow. So this is the way we help people who only have a mobile phone left as their telecommunications solution. Um, you come home, you put your phone in somewhere in the middle of the house where the telephone transmitter is. If the phone gets a message or a notification, all of the flashing lights will flash around the home or the pager things will vibrate. Yep, that's right. All right, so next up is our baby cry transmitter. So that's this one here. This one goes in the baby's room and it listens for the sound of the baby crying. It's got a little microphone in the back of it um, that will pick up the sound. Um, and it can also connect to things like the contact mat so that you can put it beside the bed and if the baby hops out of bed, they'll step on the mat activate the baby transmitter and let mum know that the baby's got out of bed or dad know that the baby's got out of bed. <laughs> they're, they're about to, they'll be in your room in just a few more seconds to give you some notice. <laughs> um, it can be adjusted to change how loud the baby has to cry and how long the baby has to cry. Um, so um, that's adjustable just by using these two buttons on the side and the different settings are shown inside the battery cover. So if someone sort of gets one and gets a bit stuck, yeah. um, in the battery cover there, that they can just have a look at that and it'll tell them exactly what the different settings are available to them. And using those dip switches is really important to ensure people get a, a, a good result. There has been occasions where people have felt as though the baby monitor wasn't working reliably from them. And every time it's because the user has not made the necessary adjustments. So they, they're saying that the baby's cry monitor is not being activated. It's because they haven't adjusted the sensitivity to suit their environment. So um, I think out of the box, Russ, does it have a default that it's on the shortest or the middle setting? It's on the shortest time, yeah. but it's on the softest, like the, the baby needs to cry quite loud. Yep. in order for it to, to activate. Yes. Change that sensitivity and make it a bit more sensitive. Yep. Um, it also depends on how far away from the cot um, you're putting the baby monitor. So you yep. know, if it's right up close to the baby when it's crying, it's going to get a better sound signal yep. than if it's further away. So, yep. so we, there. yeah, so we do reinforce to people that there's a bit of, you know, you just have to read the, read the manual and set the adjustments correctly. And if people get stuck with this, remembering that we often spend a lot of time taking people through how to set these things up or troubleshoot them over the phone. Uh, even for the clients who are deaf, Auslan users, you know, we support those customers as well with FaceTime calls, um, you know, to get it working. And it usually is all it takes to, to turn someone who's a little bit frustrated into a very happy 
um, happy customer. Yep. And this is just showing the connectivity there of the, the baby monitor, either through the microphone or through that um, external contact mat. I think, Russ, we agree that too that the, the baby that's still in this cot is perhaps time to move into a, a single yeah, bed. Yeah. It's quite a large, large baby. <laughs> that's this. Very big headed baby. All right, so that's our transmitters. Um, and now we move into the receivers. So this is how your clients want to be alerted. So do they want sound? Do they want light? Do they want vibration? Um, or a combination of those things. Our most common one is this guy, which is our Bellman alarm clock receiver. Um, the alarm clock receiver has four flashing LEDs at the front here as well as the receiver LEDs here that show which transmitter it is that's been activated. Um, you've got your time adjustment on the side here. So just press the, the time button and rotate to change the hours and then press the time button again and rotate to change the minutes. On the other side is the alarm button um, and that shows on the front of the clock as well. And you just do the same procedure to change the alarm time. There's a snooze button. Oops. There's a snooze button on the top of the clock there, um, and that will give the clients nine minutes snooze the first time they press it, and then seven minutes, and then five minutes, and then it just keeps going off every three minutes. So it's a smart snooze function to actually wake people up. The alarm on/off button's there, and it will light up red to show that the alarm is on, um, and it turns off when the alarm's off. It'll also show on the display, and I don't know how well you'll see this on the screen. Yeah, um, I can see it there. We'll show um, on the screen, there's a little um, bell icon to say that the alarm is activated. When a transmitter goes off, you'll see um, the alarm clock go off. It'll show the um, activation there um, and let them know you know, whether it's the door or the baby or the, the telephone um, that's been activated. The alarm clock has a different vibration pattern through the bed shaker. So the bed shaker goes under the pillow and it's got a different vibration pattern for each of the transmitters. So someone who may be deaf blind or even if you just don't want to roll over and look at the clock, um, you'll know which of the transmitters has been activated by the vibration pattern of the bed shaker, which is really cool. Um, comes with battery backup. Now we say it's a battery backup because some people expect it to be a travel alarm clock and where they will be able to charge it up, unplug it and go on a trip around the world for you know two weeks, um, which is a dream for us in lockdown down here in Victoria. Um, so the battery backup will last probably a day and a half um, it activates all the functions, which is really good for the alarm clock and the, and the bed shaker and all that. So that if the power fails during the night, the person's still going to get up for work in the morning, as well as still be alerted to things like their smoke alarm, which is really, really important. Um, we're getting a lot of requests for things like Wi-Fi connected products, um, which you know are great if they're working and if the power's on and, and the Wi-Fi is on. Um, but in the event of a power failure, you're going to lose your Wi-Fi and then your smoke alarm's got no way of sending a signal to whatever you've got, whether it's a smart watch or your phone or whatever. You're not going to get that signal to say, hey, you know, the smoke alarm's going off. So this system is all standalone. It makes sure that, you know, regardless of, of you know, how someone's connected to it, um, that it will work all the time, every time. This just shows you some of the connections in the clock. Um, in the back of the clock, um, there's a few different options for changing things like the backlight. So uh, there's a button here for the backlight. Um, normally the screen goes off like that. And then if you want to check the time during the night, you would tap the snooze button, the screen lights up, and then you can look at the time and it will turn off so that the, the room's dark again. And the reason that it does that is that it, because it's using light to wake you up, it gives you the most difference between light and dark. If the client does turn around and say, hey, I absolutely want to have um, the backlight on all the time, um, on the back here with the brightness uh, switch, you can actually press that five times 
and it will keep the backlight on um, permanently and then um, you know during the night they can just look at the clock and it will it will show them the time I think you as you said Russ we made a point of highlighting that feature because we do get feedback from customers from time to time everybody has a different view on what they would like their alarm clock to do we have some customers who want a dark room at night other customers who like the glow of their alarm clock to yeah. to be able to see where they need to go if they need to go to the toilet or something so given that we have all these varying needs and it's hard to make a product that just one product suits everyone i think that leaving the light backlight on is a good thing to remember because we do from time to time have people that find the default setting where the screen goes blank is something that makes them uncomfortable because it's different to how their old clock works. Yep, that's it. All right, next up is our flashing light receiver. So uh, this is a visual alert. It doesn't make any sound, um, but it does have the colored LEDs on the front there to identify the different transmitters that have been activated. In the back here, um, it does have a connection to uh, a landline telephone socket. So you can plug this one directly into a phone socket. So if someone's got a phone socket in their bedroom, they can actually plug that light directly into it. If the phone rings, it will activate the flashing light um, and they don't need that telephone transmitter in between. That um, feature on that flash receiver, Russ, just to explain, because one of the questions from um, one of the attendees was relates to this as well. The, the telephone transmitter or the flash receiver the products that have a telephone socket or an RJ12 connection, is it? Yep. The normal phone plug. It comes in the box with a double adapter, is that right? That's right, yeah, yep. double adapter and the phone. So if you have a telephone and a flashing light or a telephone and a telephone transmitter, you plug both devices into the one connection with a double adapter that we give you. And that means when a call comes in, the phone rings and the transmitter is activated. Um, if people have newer NBN installations, when we talk about all of these products, they are designed to connect to an analog port. So we've had experience with this. When a customer gets the NBN, it doesn't necessarily mean all of the phone sockets in the house work anymore. It's quite common that when you get the NBN, that means now all of the phone sockets in the house no longer work. And the only one that works is the one that's in the cupboard where your modem is and you have to plug all of your analog devices in at that location. So um, I have an MBN modem on the back of that modem. It has a port or a connection. And is there one or two, Russ? Do you know? Usually two phone sockets. Yeah, so there's two analog connections. So that's where we need to connect it in some cases. So it's, it's different for every, um, yeah, every scenario, but that's the MBN question answered. All right, and just so you can see the flashing light, that's it there. So it's showing you the green symbol to say that the door has been activated and then the white light on the top flashes. So that will flash six times during the day and eight times during the night. It's got a sensor in it that knows whether it's light or dark yeah. um, and so it flashes for longer um, during the night. Again, it's got the four rechargeable batteries in it, so you don't have to um, worry about buying them. Um, and when you plug the flash receiver in, it will automatically charge them, and it will automatically, like if it loses power, it'll automatically switch on to using those batteries to, to charge or to operate the flash um, until it gets back on power. This one here is our pager receiver. So this is one that we have that's really, really portable. Um, this one provides only a vibrating alert, but it does have the four different LEDs again to show which transmitter's been activated. And it does do the uh, different vibration pattern for each of the transmitters. So again, your person with, you know, that might be deaf blind or, you know, just doesn't look at the pager will be able to easily tell which one's been activated because of the vibration pattern with that. It's powered by a single AAA rechargeable battery. Um, and that rechargeable battery comes with the charging stand. So we always recommend that people, if you're buying the pager, 
by the charging stand because it means that at night you can put your charger in the stand. The stand also has an output on the side of it that connects to uh, your bed shaker. So someone can um, use that as their receiver beside the bed. And then if it goes off, it will activate the bed shaker and, and wake them during the night. In the morning, pick it up, clip it on their clothes and off they go. It's a really, really portable system, um, quite light um, and easy to use. Um, there's a number of people that we get asking about a product that's on the Bellman website, um, which is called the Bellman Wrist Receiver, um, which is a small sort of square wrist receiver. Unfortunately, it uses a different frequency to the products that we use here in Australia. So it would need to be, um, it, it, it's not available to, to bring it in because it won't work with our equipment. Um, and it's actually unlicensed for here. The, the frequency that it transmits on um, is unlicensed for people to use. Um, well, like for this sort of product. Andrew, you're muted. I can see you're talking, but you're on mute. Not only am I good at, um, there you go, I'm unmuted. I was going to say, we're just um, talking about how the 868 platform exists for all of the products you're looking at as well. So sometimes remember that products, if you don't purchase them from within Australia, um, if they come from a European market, they're on a different frequency. They don't work with the stuff that we sell in Australia because as Russ has said about the wrist receiver, that frequency is not approved in Australia. So there's many other things to consider. Yep. And then our last receiver is this unit. This is our portable receiver. So this one makes a noise. Um, it's amplified up to 90 decibels. So it's quite a loud um, response. Um, and it makes a different sound for each of the transmitters. So doorbell sound, uh, um, telephone ringing sound, um, and then different sounds for the baby monitor and smoke alarm. This one's powered by four c size batteries. So um, it means that it's really portable. The person can just pick it up, take it out in the garden with them. Um, we've seen them mounted on the underside of the seat of those little walkie trolleys. Um, you know, it's, it can be put on a bookshelf somewhere, whatever they want to do, but it provides an audible sound um, for the Bellman system. And that's really good in places where you might have a person with a hearing loss in a house, um, but then also their family are living there um, who need to hear the doorbell. Um, and so you can, you can use that sort of thing to provide that sound. And it also provides um, an audible sound for whoever's at the door that, you know, if they push a button and there might be a flashing light going off inside, but they don't hear a doorbell go off, they might think that the doorbell's broken or something like that. Um, and so that's a really good way that they should be able to hear the, the doorbell ring when they push the doorbell button as well. Yeah. If someone doesn't want to use the batteries, you can also get a power supply separately that we can plug into um, the side there um, and that will keep it you know, powered without having to worry about changing batteries. Just on, on the, one of the things Russ, if that's, we've, have we discussed all of the receivers for the system now? That's correct, yep. yeah. One of the things that one of the attendees has asked if we could just briefly explain the concept of the radio keys, you know how, out of the box, um, this system all works. So you buy a Bellman system, you get your transmitters and your receivers and the system just works when you set it up and plug it in. In the rare instance that you might have a neighbor using the same system, obviously you don't want to know when they have a visitor and nor do they want to know when you have a visitor. You can change the radio key of your system. And it's just like you change the radio key if you've ever done it on your garage door. So Russ is showing us here, inside the battery cover, there's a series of little dip switches. And it's the first section, isn't it Russ, that relates to the radio key? Uh, well, it's, it's different on each one. Okay. But it's clearly marked radio key and it's six yep. switches. So, so then as long as all of your transmitters are on the same radio key, then they'll all work. So if you, if you decide, I'm going to change the radio key of, of my doorbell or my baby monitor or whatever. You have to change the radio key on all of them so that they work. So you yeah. could do it there, Russ, sorry, with your um, transmitter, that baby yeah. monitor, if 
you were going to change the radio key on that, you would just change one of the dip switches and just yeah. show us on the flash receiver what you have to do. How do you put that into programming mode to... Yeah. So you can see on this one, or maybe you can't, it might be too small. I can see the dip switches, I've but... Change the radio key. Yep. Um, I've just put one, two, three up. And it doesn't matter which ones you put up. You can put up two, four, six. You can put up just one. You can, you know, it doesn't matter. As just has to be different. On the same. So if you put one, two, three up on this one, you need to put one, two, three up on this one and this one and, and make sure that they're all, all exactly the same. And then when you... Um, change that. I'll just change it on here. So then when you've got your, your flash receiver, you press and hold the test button at the top and it will start to flash. So, so we're just waiting to see the two so, LEDs blinking there and that's now the, that's now in programming road. So Russ is going to activate Press the test button, which is the two buttons on the side of this one, while that's blinking. Yep. And you get the four LEDs running across the screen to say that, yes, it's changed. And then when I press this test button again, my flashlight goes off and says that it's connected. So it's a good way to test it after you've done that change. Yep. And there's literally thousands of combinations of radio keys. So it, it's in all the times of doing this, it's not likely you're going to come across a situation where you have, um, uh, don't have an option. And just interestingly, Russ, there's been a couple of occasions where we've had um, unique situations where someone might say, listen, maybe at night time while I'm in the bedroom, I only want my alarm clock to work for the smoke alarm. You know, I don't, I don't want to be disturbed when someone comes to the front door. So you can actually set your bellman system up so that you could change the radio key for your doorbell button and make it so that it only works with the flashing light in the living room so that you, you know, you can connect it at that, but you can have some peace and quiet in the bedroom. And likewise, you might pair the baby monitor just with the alarm clock so that, you know, you can, get creative like that. But I think too, Russ, you were going to mention before that the smoke alarm um, transmits across all those frequencies, yeah. across all of them. So if someone changes the radio key of their Bellman system so that they don't get interference from the neighbor's doorbell or whatever it might be, you will always hear um, be alerted to the smoke alarm. So even if your neighbor has an alarm, I guess it's important to they'll still know there's a fire in the area. That's that transmits across all radio keys. Yeah, that's right. So you don't actually have to change any of the dip switches on the smoke alarm. Um, it'll just automatically do that. The um, Just on the other one, Russ, with the transmitters, we talked about the range before. Just to reinforce that, the different transmitters uh, have varying range transmission. So the, the little push button transmitter that's just at the front there, as Russ said, in an open area, we comfortably test that within line of sight and we can say up to 30 meters, but in a more realistic environment like the home, we like to be more conservative and say 15 to 20 meters typically. Um, but there are occasions where someone has a, a brick front door and maybe internal brick walls or, or something like that that can affect that further. So if, um, if they have that rust, that's where we might suggest they use the doorbell the door. transmitter yeah. rather I mean, than- The doorbell that, that we can supply with this one um, that they can just plug into a PowerPoint, um, put a button at the front door, that'll send to the transmitter in a more central location in the house. And yeah. then the transmitter here will send out the signal to whatever receivers you've got. So that's a good thing for people with a larger home as well, um, yep. to make sure they get alerted wherever they are in and around the house. Yeah, yeah definitely. And then just so you can see some of these accessories that we've been talking about, um, the pager charges there and the mobile phone sensor, um, and that's the contact mat as well. And all of these, or the, the charger is for the pager, but the mobile phone sensor and the contact mat will plug directly into um, the alarm clock, the telephone transmitter, or the baby monitor transmitter. Then we've got magnetic switch, uh, a bell med shaker. And then the last one there is what's called a magnetic mount kit. 
Um, and this is for people that uh, maybe say, look, I don't want to screw my smoke detector into the wall uh, or into the ceiling, sorry. Um, I don't want to screw it in because I'm renting or whatever the case may be. They can get that mount kit, stick it on the back of the smoke alarm and then stick the other component to the ceiling. And then that's just a magnetic connection between the two that holds it up there and, and keeps it on the ceiling for them. If I can just um, just comment, Rasta, just to, for um, one of the participants previously, when we were talking about the doorbell and the door transmitter range, for larger houses, we were suggesting that sometimes using the door, the, the door transmitter, um, can you just hold the door transmitter up, Russ? So the door transmitter here is what you could use with a normal acoustic doorbell. We sell a little um, one that plugs into a PowerPoint that makes a sound. You can put that transmitter in the middle of the house, which then ensures we have better coverage around the home. Whereas the push button at the front obviously transmits from the front of the house. So that's where sometimes people might find they need to have that extra distance. That's the answer to how we resolve that. It's just moving where the signal's transmitted from basically. Yeah. Yeah, making it more central. <clears throat> the magnetic switch, Russ, what transmitter does that connect to? So magnetic switch will connect to the telephone transmitter through that external trigger socket. Yeah. It's just there. So the telephone transmitter, even though it's, we, we call it a telephone, it's a, it's a multi-purpose transmitter. And yep. it's, it's really easy for a person who's not an electrician or a technical person to use and set up this stuff. Um, the, the magnetic switch comes with a little 3.5 mil plug on it and you plug it into the socket on the side. And for those who, don't know the magnetic switch. The idea is you, you stick one part on the door, one part on the door frame, and when this when the when it opens, it triggers the transmitter. Um, we've had some interesting scenarios where we've set this up over the years for people. Russ, we had that uh, scenario where we set one up on a fridge door. We had somebody who wanted to wake up somebody in the house when somebody else was opening the fridge at night, going for their midnight mm -hmm. snacks. So we put a magnetic switch on the bottom of the fridge door and that allowed the deaf person in the home to be awoken when the other person was going into the fridge at night. Um, We've put them on windows for parents of teenagers to yeah. alert them that their kids are sneaking out in the middle of the night. So there's a whole range of, of different um, scenarios um, that, that we can um, help out with. And that's something really important to to remember too that if you've got a scenario that you sort of go, oh, I wonder if we can do something here, um, give us a ring or drop us an email and we can certainly, you know, usually find a solution to, to whatever the problem is that you, you need help with. Um, this is the easiest way to buy Bellman products. So we've put together some packs there um, that allow um, people to get equipment into their home. Um, easily and, and simply without having to think too much about what it is they're getting. And our first pack is the safe pack. So this is probably the starter pack, I would call this, um, that most people get either through NDIS or just because they have a need for it. And it consists of the smoke alarm transmitter, the alarm clock receiver, and the bed shaker. So smoke alarm goes on the ceiling, sends to the alarm clock in the bedroom, and then that will activate the vibrating pad to say, hey, the house is burning down, you might want to get up. The next pack is our smoke alarm pack. So what that one is, is instead of using the alarm clock receiver, we use the flash receiver. So we swap those out. They still get the bed shaker, they still get the smoke alarm, um, but instead of the alarm clock, they just have a flashing light in the bedroom to wake them in, in the event of a fire. This one's called our care pack. So this one consists of the doorbell push button and the flashing light. So then if you've got someone who wants a doorbell and a fire alarm, you could set that up that they have a safe pack with your smoke alarm, alarm clock and bed shaker. They get a care pack, which is their doorbell and flashing light. So during the day, they would have the flashing light in their general living area of the house. They have the clock in the bedroom, so they don't have to worry about you know moving receivers around you know during the day. Um, they literally just leave them where they are. They'll see them when they're flashing during the day, and they'll feel it and see it when they you know get into bed and, and get their alarm clock alerts.
One of the other really popular things we're doing at the moment is these video doorbells. Um, so we've got a, a doorbell kit, which is, uh, we use the Ring video doorbell. Um, and what this does is it sends a signal to a person's mobile phone, to their smartwatch, whatever, to say, hey, there's someone at the door. Um, and there's a video camera there that um, if they look on their phone, they can see who's at the door and they can actually even talk to them through that um, phone app. They don't have to be home to use it. So if they're down the supermarket or um, in another country or whatever, um, they will still get an alert on their phone to say, hey, there's someone at your door, as long as there's Wi-Fi there. That will then send a signal to this guy, which is the ring chime. Um, and the ring chime will then make a sound, which we then put our door transmitter on. And that again, listens for that sound of the doorbell, says, hey, I heard it, sends a signal out to whatever receivers the person's got in their home. So they not only get an alert on their phone and, and smartwatch or whatever, but also on their alarm clock or their flashing light or their portable receiver or their pager. It's all sort of interconnected. Um, and it's really easy to set up, you know, following the app, um, just a matter of, of connecting it all through the Bluetooth and through the Wi-Fi. Um, the hardest part will probably be installing the, the doorbell outside, um, which is just a matter of putting a couple of screws in um, to, to the brickwork or to the woodwork of the house outside. Um, and, and that's done. The app actually takes you through, there's a video to show exactly how to do it. So it's a really good um, option for someone to, to self-install. Um, in Victoria, once these restrictions are, are lifted, um, we do also offer an installation service. So if you've got clients there that do want this sort of equipment, um, we can arrange for a technician to go out and install it um, in Victoria. And the last of our packages is our Bellman Visit Baby Cry Pager Pack. So this one gives you the baby monitor, pager charger and the bed shaker. And so that's good for during the day, you've got the pager on you, you walk around the house and you know when baby's crying. At night, put the pager on the charger ready for the next day and then bed shaker will take, kick in and you know alert you during the night that the baby's crying. So you'll see that none of these packages actually cross over. Um, they, they you know, give you different alerting and different um, scenarios for doorbells and smoke alarms and that sort of thing. So that it, it's easy for clients to go, you know, this is what I want. I need something for my baby or I need something for the doorbell or I need something for the smoke alarm. And they can just buy a pack and it's all ready to go out of the box. All of the packs automatically connect unless you've changed those radio keys like we said earlier. So um, if, you, if they buy something and change the radio keys on it, then when they buy more equipment, they just need to remember to make sure they change those radio keys to match whatever they've got in the house already. Then just a bit of information about us. So we are registered NDIS providers through the NDIS Commission. Um, so we can provide solutions for plan managed clients, self managed clients, NDIA managed clients. So we, we can go through the portal and claim funds through there. So how do you order? Um, easiest way is to go online to our website through wom.com.au. Um, and the client just goes through shopping, adds the price to their cart that they would like. Um, and then they go through the checkout process as if they're paying with a credit card. But when it gets to that screen, um, you just choose NDIS participant instead of credit card. And there's a few questions that come up like, you know, I need your NDIS number. If you plan manage your plan manager details, if you're um, agency managed, we need your date of birth and your uh, NDIS number, that sort of thing. Um, and depending on what scenario, we will either send out an invoice to you. Um, we will liaise with your plan managers and send an invoice to them or we'll process a payment request through the NDIS portal. Once that gets paid, we dispatch the goods straight out to the client. Um, as I said earlier, if you do have any queries, certainly feel free to contact us. All of our staff are really well um, raised on, on this equipment, so they do know, um, you know how it all works and some really good different options for, for some of the trickier scenarios that you may come against um, out in the field. 
Um, I'm sure that there's always something that, that's going to come up that we've never seen before, but um, we can usually find a, a solution for it. So don't hesitate to, to contact us. Um, we can also take an email order. So just drop us the details of the client and we can um, do the order through that way. Um, or you, yeah, you just give us a call and we can, we can talk to you that way. The, um, just one more thing to add, Ras, just for one of the participants is just on the packages we've talked about, the obviously NDIS eligibility depends, you know, on the funds for the individual client, but DVA will also fund a lot of these packages. Specifically, right. the, sm the smoke alarm pack is not one that requires pre-approval. It just needs um, a copy of the client's audiogram and you can send the invoice for the product from the supplier straight to DVA. That's correct, isn't it, Russ? Yeah, well, we need a direct order form from the audiologist. Yep. Um, and then we can, we can liaise with DBA to get that done for them, yeah. Or, or us, as word of mouth, can also supply the product if um, an OT is involved and they provide a copy of the audiogram, is that right? And the clinical justification, yeah. So we need okay. a letter from them saying that the client... Cool. Um, and and all of the other products as well, like the doorbell, we have a doorbell package, for example, that's popular with DVA. And again, it is something that's covered, but it's usually about writing forward a justification to explain that the client needs a solution like the Bellman one, because our doorbell system works with our smoke alarm system. And that's valuable for people who um, are, uh, might be elderly. But it's important that the stuff works together. I don't like the idea of selling brand X of a doorbell and then a different brand of a smoke alarm system when you could give them something that talks to each other. And you do sometimes have to explain that in your justification. Otherwise you might not get DVA funding the product because they yeah. may suggest an alternative product that's a lower cost. Yeah. Um, so it's good to explain that. So conscious of the, of the time, Russ, have you got anything else um, you wanted to point out? No, if anyone else has got any questions, um, certainly feel free to um, contact us. We're more than happy to um, answer any questions. Yep. So this is one of the first ones. So thank you to Russ for organising today and thanks to everybody for coming online and having a listen and, and showing your interest. Um, we'll send a copy of a link to the video out. So anybody who'd missed this or thought that it was so amazing, you want to share it from, with all your friends and shout it from the rooftops, we'll send you a link to it, um, publish it on the YouTube page. So it will be everywhere. You won't be able to get rid of us. Um, and we'll be having another one coming up soon that you'll get an invitation to. Fantastic. Thanks everyone for coming along and uh, hope to see you at the next one. Thank you. Bye.